You are listening to Beyond the Wheel, a podcast about the people and ideas that drive the RV community forward. Looking to get out there and stay out there? Battleborn Batteries lithium ion batteries are here to power your RV, marine, and off grid adventures. Designed as an easy drop in replacement for traditional lead acid batteries, these reliable solutions have two to three times the power, charge five times faster, are a fifth of the weight, and last 10 times longer. Offered in a variety of models in unique sizes and shapes, ranging from 50 amp hour to a robust 270 amp hour. And backed by a 10-year warranty. Battleborn batteries are built to fit your needs and power your experiences. On the road, on the water, and off the grid, reliable power is here. Check them out at battlebornbatteries.com. Welcome to another episode. Do you have adjustable brackets on your solar panels? I never had them because I did not want to have to climb on the roof and adjust them manually. Finally, a couple of smart engineers, Tom and Masood from Roboteos, have designed a roof-mounted system that has the solar panels follow the sun throughout the day. I will not do it justice by trying to explain it, so let's introduce Tom and Masood and have them talk about it. Hey, Tom and Masood. Thanks for joining us today. Could the two of you kind of introduce yourself and let us know what your roles in the company are? Yeah. Hi, Kenny. Thanks so much for having us. Excited to chat with you guys today. My name is Tom Gacka. I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of Robotios, and I've been leading our uh, product development and production uh, sides of the business. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Masood Bayezi. Um, Thanks again for having us. I'm leading the controls, embedded software, and electrical side of the project. So I'm I'm curious before we get too far, how do how do you guys know each other? Is it that you know each other because of the company or did you know each other before the start of the company? Yeah, before the start of the company, we had actually worked together at a company here out in Southern California. It was a hybrid electric vehicle startup uh, and we worked really closely together. And uh, after that, you know, we we stayed in touch and became came close friends uh, as we kind of moved around in our career, but always, always stayed, uh, stayed close before starting Robotios. Okay. And are you guys both engineers or some kind of science, electronic computer science background? Yeah, we're both uh, mechanical engineers. So Kenny called me right after he saw your product at Overland and said, we got to get these guys on the show. Can you kind of explain to our listeners what Robotios does and also where the name came from? Basically, Robotios is the is a, is a manufacturer of high-efficiency rooftop solar systems, um, specifically for off-grid applications like RVs and camper vans. We have produced the first ever two-axis rooftop mounted solar tracking system, which can basically dramatically increase the amount of energy you you capture throughout the day. We have developed a complete line of uh, products, including high-efficiency solar panels, also a single-axis tracking system. At our core, Robotios is a, is a tech robotic company. We plan to identify and find the problems that have been ignored and use basically a state of the art to attack those problems and solve them. About the name, this is like the, the startups, every startup's first challenge that they have <laughs> to like spend so much time on. We definitely spend way more than we, <laughs> we were supposed to spend on it. The fact that it's a one-time thing and you don't you don't go back to it, it makes it it makes it I don't know high stake task. So Robotios is made of basically two different words: robot plus Eos. Eos is the um, the Greek goddess of of the dawn, who was charged with um, bringing the, the the dawn to the Greek world every morning. Um, so our first project, which is a solar tracker, basically is, is a robot that starts its function at the the very early seconds of the morning at the dawn so we have robot and eos we have robot eos that's cool that's yeah Yeah, pretty cool i I could see why it would take you a little time though to really come up with a a good name and i think it is a good name i think you know the the first time you you might read it it might be like oh what does that say but then once you get it 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 has a good flow to it i think it rolls kind of off the tongue it's a good name thanks We're, we're so proud of it (laughs) <laughs> good, good. 
we had a pretty hilarious whiteboard of our brainstorming sessions to try to come up with the name combination of different words, the cities where we grew up in and all sorts of crazy combinations. It was, it was challenging, but yeah, happy with where, where we landed. And then you, you had said that you are the first multi-axis solar panel device. I would imagine now a big part of your company is probably tracking down, like getting a patent to protect it. Is that a big part of your work day now is, is just trying to protect what you guys have built? Yes, it's, it's a patented technology that we're using. Basically, we're, we have a two axis system that does not occupy, um, it has the same footprint as flat panels, mm. uh, but it still, it does um, track the sun in two axis. And you can park the vehicle any, any direction, facing any direction, you still would be looking at the sun directly. So it's a patent that uh, we have the uh, non-provisional panel submitted. We um, submitted a, pat- a provisional patent also. Yeah, we're waiting for the results. Okay. Which can take a long time, I guess. I, Correct. I understand that's a long process. Correct. Yeah. So for somebody listening, and they, they're not getting a visual of this, I when I looked at your panel system up on top of, we had it on an Echo, and then Tom had explained that you could do a dual access as well, because I think we just had a single axle or single access on the on the echo so when he was describing the dual i kind of thought of that to myself as like you're almost taking the benefits of a portable solar panel that you put on the ground and somebody goes out and you can turn and adjust it to match the sun but you're you're taking the advantages of having a portable panel but making it fixed up on the roof i I thought that was genius (laughs) yeah that's we we're trying to make like a fully automatic solution that gives the customer the best experience possible. You don't have to worry about, you know, adjusting your panels on the ground or someone walking off with them, which is a, you know, a real risk whenever you're parked at a campground with an expensive deployable solar system. Solar tracking has been around in many other industries for its obvious benefits, but we're really the first to bring it to the RV uh, space and, you know, have really packed it totally full with a lot of features that just make it uh, trying to give the user the best experience possible. What year did you guys start? We, we started 2022. It took us, um, I would say, a year to exercise the courage to, to quit our jobs. So there was definitely a time that we, we sat down, watched Shark Tanks every night, listened to podcasts like startup podcasts to basically like, to get the mindset and to be ready to create our jobs. And we definitely, we spent six months on the business model, uh, feeling the market, talking to the people in the industry and getting an idea where the market is and what customers actually want uh, regarding this specific idea before we start. Interesting. So were you guys kind of starting the company at the same time that you were working full time? We were just thinking about the idea, talking to people, doing some a little bit of research before we actually quit our jobs. I think that period was about six months that we seriously thought about it and made the initial plans. Uh, so by the time we quit our jobs, it's actually a, a, a working day. Okay, yeah. very cool. And you, you guys had mentioned, you know, you're trying to remove the fact that one, there's theft of the portable panel being down on the ground some, where somebody can like pick it up and take it. The other pain point is somebody physically having to always turn the panels to get them to the, the right position. So you guys seem to under, have a pretty good understanding of the pain points that RVers go through when it comes to solar panels. Does that mean that you guys are RVers yourself? Do you have camping experience? Like, Is your background like uh, an out, are you guys outdoorsy, I guess? Yeah. Living in California, we're super blessed with awesome campgrounds that are pretty easy to get to. Sierra Nevadas are just beautiful. So it's always been a passion of mine to go uh, camping. And in 2019, I bought a Sprinter van, a 174 by 4 van. I've seen so many of them around here in California and just had this dream of a, a, a van built out with some surfboards attached to it and really just being able to go you know, anywhere and have, have some awesome adventures. So I bought my, my Sprinter in 2019 and I self-converted it. It was good timing in the sense that when COVID hit in 2020, you know, we were not, there wasn't a whole lot that you could do. You were kind of stuck in your home. So that's when I did the majority of the conversion. I actually ended up living out of the van for a six month period. Uh, I was 
you know, between the Bay Area at a, a job up in, in Foster City and coming down to visit friends in, in Southern California and LA. So for about six months, I lived full time out of the van. And that's where I really experienced, you know, firsthand the struggle of powering the appliances that you need to be in the van long term. I was working full time. So I was on my computer, you know, 10 hours a day trying to run, you know, having enough internet and trying to keep it, you know, comfortable inside and keeping all my food in the fridge cold and having hot water and everything. And it really just bothered me when I couldn't you know, stay stationary. And I had to worry about my power. I had to turn the engine on or I had to go for a drive to charge up the batteries. You know, that kind of spurred the idea of like, there's got to be, you know, ways to increase the efficiency or increase the output. And being, you know, engineer, I was always kind of looking at other solar systems and seeing how flat mounted panels are really only seen in vehicle and RV applications because, of the unique challenges. So that got my kind of problem solving brain uh, geared and having been, you know, a, a customer myself kind of understood what would, you know, I was basically designing a system for myself. What would I ultimately want to have is I just want it to be totally automatic. I want it to maximize the energy that my roof space can capture because there's also other competing resources on the roof space, especially in the camper van market. People want to have roof racks with their gear storage or uh, AC systems, rooftop fans. So the real estate is really limited. Uh, and that's what got me thinking, you know, how can we, how can we increase the energy production per square, you know, per square foot? So Kenny mentioned um, when he saw you guys at, at Overland that your panels are super light compared to other panels. I'm wondering, is that... Was that part of the initial design or were you trying to use, is the weight of a panel an issue that caused you to have to make these lighter? Yeah, the majority of the weight reduction that we get is uh, by removing the glass. So traditional rigid solar panels have a glass top sheet and that's really the heaviest part of the panel. And so existing lightweight panels were out there, you know, these flexible panels that are, are very thin. Uh, also didn't really work for our application because we were tilting and manipulating an array that we wanted to be rigid and flat. And so there wasn't really anything on the market that met the needs of what would be the perfect solar panel for our tracking systems. And so that's really what led us to design our own uh, system. So yeah, we, we mount our panels on a rigid uh, honeycomb structure. Um, and that also helps the durability that the, the honeycomb material absorbs a lot of the strain and the stress that the, the panels would see throughout their operation. Um, and that, that protects the solar cell uh, much better than the traditional flexible panels. And then instead of glass, which is the really heavy component, we use a thin uh, multi-layer uh, polymer film that's weather resistant and uh, has really good UV aging properties um, that allows us to double the warranty period that uh, the flat you know, flexible uh, panels can offer. So we can, um, so we really, you know, we, we needed something super light, very thin, because a low profile design was also something we really stressed and there really wasn't anything on the market. So, you know, we decided to, to design something specifically for it. I have a follow-up question for your, your, your construction of your solar panel. You said normal solar panels have that glass top and you're using a polyurethane. Is that what you said? It's a thin, thin polymer film. So it's like a multi-layer plastic based film. Does that still offer the same type of protection, say against uh, hail? It may not be quite as good as glass in a hail environment, but it's still rated for, um, for all of those use cases. Okay. I was just wondering, does somebody need to worry about it being damaged in a, 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 a ter some type of storm or anything like that? Yeah, certainly uh, it would be better than the existing lightweight flexible panels in that sense because of the honeycomb structure that there is underneath. And the film that we use on top is pretty similar to, uh, it's, it's the same types of materials that they use on those panels. In, in your design, did you have something like a model to work from or did you have to start from scratch? And I'm wondering when you started, how did you go about designing that multi-axis system that would actually fit on top of a vehicle? Because there's lots of different factors there, right? There's like size, weight, 
weather, all that stuff. So it's really fascinating to come up with a system. I'm just wondering, like, what was the process for thinking that through? Yeah, luckily, our systems engineering background really helped us here because there are, like you said, a ton of competing factors. Um, the, the biggest challenge was really the, the low profile in the stowed position and not taking up any more roof space than a flat mounted system would occupy. So we built models, we built uh, the, the kinematics of the, of the robotic platform that we've developed. It's quite complicated and there's lots of trade-offs from the overall design of the system to the maximum angle that can be tilted, which impacts the energy that can be captured. Also things like the resistance to the wind force and its stability as it's deployed and tracking the sun were big factors that we had to consider. Of course, the weight, cost, and also to make sure that it, its uh, size, you know, that the overall size of the array was something meaningful for the types of applications, and then it kind of made sense to the end customer. So we really built kind of a, a bunch of models that we used to find the sensitivity of each of these individual design parameters that we had to choose between and, and selected the best, the best option that kind of maximized the utility to the customer. When you say that you built models, I'm just curious, built models like on a computer, like they're computer generated models or physical models? Yeah, a lot of them were computer based models. We used finite element analysis, which is a, a kind of 3D CAD based software that allows you to investigate like the stiffness or the strength of the different components. And we also built um, models that are, you know, calculation based uh, scripts that would uh, explore the sensitivity of energy capture versus this maximum tilt angle, for example. So we we know, you know, it does it need to be twenty degrees, thirty degrees, forty degrees? Where where is kind of the trade off um, between the strength or or the wind resistance compared to energy capture? Okay, so that that probably allows you to really fine tune. I would imagine anyway, while while building these models, you can really kind of fine tune them and probably make changes relatively quickly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, we're we're very big on, you know, computer-aided development. It, it makes the iterations go so much faster than physically building everything and, you know, iterating on actual part. And, and I, I already know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask you anyway, because I was really surprised by the answer when I was uh, talking to you out at the Overland Show. And either one of you guys can answer. So when I was at the Overland Show, I assumed that you were tracking the sun with a light sensor, but that's not the case at all. Can you kind of talk about a little bit of uh, how how is it that your panel is able to track the location of the sun and know where to tilt? Yeah, it's actually not. Yeah, um, we did take our time to do a complete research on what are the what are the routes, what are the ways that we can take to implement this feature. The current systems out there, uh, as we were doing the research and Still, 99% they're using uh, light sensors, which is um, definitely less expensive and a simpler execution, but it comes with a few drawbacks. Basically, one of the drawbacks is every time you have to calibrate the robot, every time the robot comes up to find the sun, it has to do a 360 to know where the maximum uh, light power comes from to find the sun. And also, um, if, it's, if it's a cloudy day and if it's... It, you have a you know a branch of a tree um, putting a shadow on, on on the solar panel. We've seen like the robot they they glitch and they freak out and they know they don't know where to go and you have this like confusion. The, the robot has this confusion where the light is, where the light come, comes from and where the sun is. Knowing the fact that we wanted to do something like very sophisticated and way more efficient than the current study state of the art we decided to do a GPS-based sun tracking. When you have a GPS, you know where exactly you are in terms of your location and um, you know the time. So you get the position of the sun in the global coordinate very precisely. And then knowing the heading of your vehicle, the roll and pitch angles of your vehicle using an IMU sensor, then you know where, which direction your vehicle is exactly facing. And then you have the sun uh, position with respect to your robot slash vehicle. And I would imagine uh, that by doing it that way, you're saving 
power. You're saving energy because it doesn't need to go up and start doing this little surge. It doesn't it doesn't freak out from a little shade and start maybe bringing itself back down and back up again. I would imagine by using the GPS, you're more efficient that way. Correct. You're more efficient. You save time, you save energy, and also you you avoid those uh, glitches that customers have experienced before. So basically, in the, at the dawn, the, the robot gets up and directly tilts the panels towards the sun. So going back to the beginning of this episode, when I was asking you about patents and stuff like that, I would imagine it's going to be very difficult for somebody to try to copy you guys because you are so different uh, with, with your build. We've definitely laid out all these um, features in our patent. Just the, the mechanism itself, like us coming from a robotic background, we know robotic mechanisms and we find we select the, the mechanism that is perfect for this application. Low profile and at the same time you get enough tilt angle for your panels, not taking more than what flat panels would take in terms of the space. I want to ask you like a thousand questions now, but I want to kind of stick to stick to some of the basics also. Well, what sizes are available for the for the systems in, in terms of in terms of um, solar power? Yeah, for the two axis uh, system, the heliotrope, we're currently only offering that in a 400 watt array. Uh, each of our panels that we designed are 200 watts. So it combines two of those panels together that you can connect in series or parallel, uh, depending upon what kind of voltage level you want to run with your system. For the single axis system, we have a much wider range of uh, array size. Uh, we can do a 400 watt up to a 1200 watt uh, system on a single controller, and we can com and we can do that in a single you know array that all tilts together. And we can also do multiple single axis systems integrated onto onto a rooftop, even tilting in different directions. Uh, you know, depending upon the use case, there are some some nice benefits to having the uh, direction of the tilting axis of the single axis system be in in different or the same uh, direction. That was that was my next question. Was can they can two or more work together? And it sounds like they can. Yeah, for the if the for the two axis system, we certainly can put multiple systems onto uh, a roof space. The one thing that's really important is to make sure that you avoid shading. Uh, so you don't want to put them for the two axis system. It's tricky to put right next to each other because you can get in, you know, depending upon where the sun is, one system could shade the other one, which kind of defeats some of the efficiency gains that you might have. So if you have enough space in between, you can put uh, two systems to operate. With the single axis design, we have a little bit more flexibility in the configurations to prevent and avoid that shading problem because we know specifically which direction they'll be tilted. Uh, and when the sun is in a position relative to the vehicle. And then it seems like it's very complicated. <laughs> um, but in terms of a user, let's say I wanted to get the heliotrope, a heliotrope system. Do I also need to get a charge controller and things like that? Or is that integrated into the system as well? Right now, the system, as we're, as we're selling it, is basically just the solar uh, panel output that the user would connect to their own charge controller. We're compatible with all major charge controllers. The open circuit voltage of our panel is 40 volts, which gives a lot of flexibility for 12 volt, 24 volt, even 48 volt uh, battery systems. So you can really use it with any, any electrical system that you want. And uh, we are actually we have actually just now started to distribute Victron components, so we can supply customers with uh, charge controllers from Victron um, if uh, if they want to go that direction with us. But we're we're kind of agnostic in that sense that we can be applied to any any system. Okay, so from the heliotrope, let's say, or the solotrope, there's some type of plug that I can plug into with my wiring and then run it wherever I want to my, wherever my solar charge controller is. And I can place my controller for convenience and, and just run the wiring that way. Exactly. Yeah. Just as you would have a rooftop solar panel pass through of some kind, you know, we have MC4 connections at that terminate our solar panels. So all you need is a way to plug into those uh, and you can have the components anywhere. Okay. I have uh, two questions. I, I guess they're kind of related. 
efficiency wise or gain wise, what are you guys seeing? How much more power is somebody bringing in uh, by using your system? And then my second question is the robot itself, does it operate off of a 12 volt system or is it a 120 uh, volt system? The, the energy gains definitely depend on the time of the year and the location. So in the summer, you get less less gain than, than winter in terms of the percentage gain. But in terms of the actual gain um, of, of the, the absolute number of the energy, they're pretty, they're pretty similar. In terms of the location, the farther you get uh, from the equator, you get more energy, again, percentage-wise. But the range would be like minimum of 30%. And it can also double your energy. Like if you're in Seattle in the winter time, it doubles it doubles your in, uh, energy. But talking about like a situation in Miami and uh, the summertime, uh, you would get thirty percent. Thirty percent is a decent increase, though. That's a lot, especially when you t- guys are talking about the panel sizes. I mean, then you one of you has mentioned something about a twelve hundred watt system. So a thirty percent increase off of a twelve hundred watt. That's a significant increase that 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 allows somebody to run an ac without losing any power yeah it's definitely a possibility um and yeah masood's right the percentage wise is you know 30 percent in the summer but that's off of a much larger number you know in the summer the days are longer uh, so you have more sun available in the winter time the days are pretty short and the sun is really low but it, it really depends on the user's use case you know if you want to use your vehicle and boondock off solar in the winter time in seattle in the winter time with a 400 watt uh, system you'd be lucky to produce uh, a 500 watt hours which is really very little in terms of you know what you what you want to try to run appliances inside of an rv or a camper van and with our two axis system the heliotrope we can make over one and a half kilowatt hours so that's basically three times the energy per day and it actually makes it something that you can you can use and get by with uh boondocking are the efficiencies of the panels uh, similar to a glass top panel, like somewhere between 25 and 30 percent, I guess? Yeah, we're using the latest best solar cell that you can get in terms of uh, overall efficiency. We use a sun power uh, cell. And also another thing that's really important when talking about solar power efficiency is the module design. Any wasted space of the module that is not a solar cell exposed to sunlight is reducing the effective efficiency of the panel. So especially those lightweight, flexible panels that have the junction box on the top surface of the panel, you know, their solar cell may be 24% efficient or whatever it is, but wasted space directly impacts the efficiency of the module. So that's another big benefit of our panel is the junction box is on the back side, so it doesn't take up any extra space. So every inch of roof space that you have available can be generating electricity. And we are, yeah, I think our panels are, are over 24% uh, efficient. They're really the best, uh, best in the industry in terms of performance. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, and I think 30% is your, your uh, worst case scenario. I think that's still incredible. I think that's great. And then what, what about the power system itself that's needed to operate the system? Basically, over, over a complete day, um, uh, the robot only takes about a one watt hour uh, to actuate uh, the system. You know, it's one of the, one of the benefits of using a GPS-based tracking technology. We do not have to, like, you know, look for the, sun, for the sun all the time. You know, our typical energy increase is about, like, 1,000 watt hour, which, if you compare it to what we're consuming, we're only taking about, like, 0.1% of the benefit. One in terms watt of hour. the power consumption of the robot itself. That's great, and it and it just runs off of a twelve volt lead. So the integration to run all the electronics uh, is just a twelve volt, a single twelve volt wire that powers the actuators, the GPS system, all the control electronics. Okay, and then of course your system and the advantage of your system is your lightweight panels and using your own panel. But if somebody for whatever reason say they somebody wanted to use uh, rich solar panels or another solar panel manufacturer, would they be able to, or does your system only work with your own panels because of the weight? For the two axis system, it is just our solar panels. The one axis system, we probably could uh, make an, an adaptation to use somebody else's panels. 
And originally, you know, the concept was that we were just going to be a platform. We just wanted to allow the user to use whatever panel they wanted. But the more that we looked at it, the more we realized that as an integrated solution, uh, it really made more sense. Because we could develop a panel that was really high efficiency, super lightweight, that allows us to increase the angles of actuation, to increase the energy capture. And our panels are way lighter than a traditional panel. Our 200 watt panels weigh 10 pounds. A traditional glass fronted 200 watt panel weighs close to 30 pounds. So it's a third the weight. And that's a huge impact, especially when you're, you know, actuating these things up on top of a roof goes to wind and everything. The other thing is the size of the panel. If you waste, you know, again, back to the point of wasted space, you really need to, you know, completely take up the entire footprint of the space that you are trying to utilize in order to get the most energy. So if a user had an existing panel, you know, that was only taking up 80% of the area that our our base mounting system takes up on the roof, it kind of doesn't make sense because you're you're uh, eliminating some of the benefit of the tracking system. So that's why we really, you know, decided that it really made more sense for us to provide a full integrated solution uh, to the customer. I'll also, I'll also note that our panels are pretty competitive on price. You know, we're we're selling them right now. It's two hundred and eighty dollars for a two hundred watt panel, so it's not it's not like a you know super expensive compared to the rich solar uh, options and things that are out there. That's a great price, actually. And in terms of of the solo trope versus the heliotrope, what kind of vehicles can these systems go on? Yeah, right now we're we're focusing on our, any kind of RV or any kind of vehicle that needs you know, solar, could use solar energy. So we started off specifically working with uh, camper vans, adventure vans, sprinters, transit, ProMaster, really anything that anyone's building into a camper. Um, we've also done systems on larger RVs like the Winnebago Echo. We can also apply to larger Class A, uh, Class C RVs, specifically with the, the solo trope. You know, it's really easy to integrate. It's, it, again, takes up the same footprint as a, as a uh, flat panel, and we just need a little bit of structure to mount the, uh, the actuators and the uh, base frame, too. So any kind of vehicle like that uh, can, can use our uh, overland you know, trucks, expedition vehicles, truck campers, uh, things like that are all, all great applications. Are you guys, I know this is an RV podcast, but are you guys looking into other avenues such as sailboats or any type of boat, really, boating and also uh, trucking? Because uh, the truckers are starting to, to get hit a little bit with regulations and they got to be a little bit more green. They, they don't want them running their trucks, you know, 24-7 like it has been for the last 50 years or whatever it is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, electrification in general, we're seeing the trend go in so many different industries and, and applications, and our technology really goes hand in hand with anything that's going electric. Uh, marine application, we have some concepts in the works already for a way that, to apply our two-axis tracking system to marine applications. And yeah, there's a lot of new companies that are developing electric powertrains for things like medium and heavy-duty trucks. And that's where uh, every you know, every little bit that you can squeeze out of solar helps to re- continue to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. It continues to reduce the burden on our electrical grid. So yeah, we're, we're optimistic that our, our tracking platforms can be applied into those industries as well. You know, last time uh, I took my RV out, uh, my wife and I, we came back and we were putting out a, a slide to finish cleaning out the RV. And she hadn't forgotten to close one of the doors tightly. And so when I put the slide out, it ripped the door off the hinges. So I could see her leaving, you know, not thinking about putting those solar panels down into like their quote unquote storage position before we left somewhere. Uh, Is there like a mechanism to prevent that? So you're not driving down the road with like a sail? So yeah, so you're definitely not supposed to drive the vehicle when the robot is up. We don't, we don't recommend that. But yeah, definitely we have safety features. Um, if you forget to put the robot down, the robot itself detects the vehicle motion immediately and it starts bringing it down while being mad at you and beeping at you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so definitely it, uh, it was one of the safety, first safety features we implemented for the robot because it, you know, 
yes, we do recommend to bring the robot down, but you never know if you forget, people forget things. And all you need to do is just, there's a slider on the LCD, the user interface that you just slide it to off and that's all you need to do. And it brings the robot down. But in case, in the case that you forget to bring it down, it, it detects the vehicle motion. Also, in addition to that, we have safety mechanisms for when the wind speed is too high. Uh, if the wind speed at the threshold is 20 mi- 25 miles per hour, so if the wind speed exceeds that a certain amount, then brings the robot down. It basically it notifies you on the, on the LCD that that's the reason that we brought the robot down. The same the same feature about temperature. If the temperature is too low and or too high, that can potentially damage the robot. We bring the we bring the robot down. We've also designed re- redundant routes to operate the robot. If for any reason the electronic board is not functioning, if like Again, if branch of tree hits the electronic board, it, can, it doesn't operate uh, and it's physically damaged, you can still bring the robot down so you, you'll be able to drive and you're not stranded. Again, we have the full uh, intelligent fault management system that informs the driver in, 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 in unlikely scenarios of you know, system faulting or anything happens to the system. It notifies the driver what the, what the fault is and what should be the, the proper action. Just like a you know check engine on your on your car, that you see you you do a di- diagnosis and you get a bunch of codes. The same way our user interface interface would inform you about the status of the robot. Is it a wired system that like a a screen somewhere inside your vehicle? Is it a wired? It's not wired uh, to the robot. All you need to have is a is a USB C Type C power to the LCD. So you can put it wherever you want. You don't have to be physically connected to the robot or route your wire all the way inside the van. That's very cool. Do you also have an app then? Is it is it all could it also be run off an app? Or there's no app designed yet? There is no app as we talk right now, but definitely in the future. Okay. With the LC itself, you don't need it's actually that was one of the thoughts behind it that you know, maybe people do not want to use their phones, should be a standalone user interface. We could definitely go, go that route, but uh, we decided not to, at least for the initial version of the robot. Maybe in addition to the in a LCD interface, you would have the option to you to operate the robot through your phone, but LCD should be, a, definitely should be with the robot in case of, you know, not having your phone or your phone is not charged or dead. Yeah, I think it's a smart, smart way to go. I would much rather have something I can go to inside my vehicle because like you said, it's so easy to leave your phone somewhere and then you're stuck, right? So yeah. having that option, I think is fantastic. And I would add uh, that our user interface is a 3.5 inch uh, LCD. It's a touch screen LCD that you have all the options. Again, it shows you the status of the robot. You get to choose between the modes of the robot. It helps you with, you know, pitch, roll, and heading of the vehicle. If you wanted to level your car, you have that option. For Solar Trove, our one axis system, it tells you what the optimum angle of the vehicle direction that you can park. So you get the most benefit throughout the, the whole day. Oh, that's a really good feature. Yeah. Yeah, Masood has packed it so full with features. My initial concept of how to control the thing was literally you know, uh, maybe we have a toggle switch with some three LEDs and we'll have a red, a green, and a blue or a red, a green, and a yellow one or something. And Masood has made it over the air flash capability. We can do Bluetooth communication with other devices to pull in a bunch of information wirelessly communicating between the user interface and the robot. So it's a really competent platform that's going to be super fun to keep building those uh, features on top of. I like that it tells you your the, the, the optimal position the park i'm usually outside looking at my shadow and figure trying to figure out which way the sun is traveling to see if i'm parked in the proper way to get the most out of my panels so yeah you guys have really packed a lot into this program and software but also at the same time i feel like this is almost like you know you you set up and then you kind of forget it You're, you're not constantly going to this panel to make adjustments it's it's all doing it itself anyway so i think it's great yeah, the user can really get as deep or as shallow into the you know background as they want. We have all these extra information screens if you're curious about where the sun is and how to park, but also it's as simple as an on-off switch that's going to always maximize the energy 
uh, that's available to you given your given your circumstances. So it's it's nice that it works for any kind of customer really. It's not like you need to have a, a technical background or understanding to operate it. It's just an on off switch. Yeah, that's great. And I I know we're bombarding you guys with questions, but I'm always curious, especially being a young company and you're starting up your your sales and partnership and and uh, collaborations and things like that. Are you guys working with any of the OEMs that are out there right now to maybe you know, where your product can be offered on an RV coming right off the manufacturing line, or maybe at a dealership, maybe there's a dealer that you're working with that are adding the, adding your system at the, the dealer lot before a customer even takes it home. Yeah, you're right. We, we are very early on and we're really just in the middle of some early production runs. And we've partnered with some people who have been really passionate about, you know, the system and the idea who have been giving us really good direct user feedback. We're working through integration with various types of vehicles and systems. So right now we're not working directly with any major OEMs, but we are working with uh, like van builders and also some manufacturers of uh, like off-grid trailers uh, where, uh, you know, some smaller niches where our system really shines in terms of the the benefit that it can bring. But we'd love to, you know, the the ultimate dream is to uh, have this as an option on your Winnebago Revel or your Storyteller vehicle and get this out in in larger channels. On the flip side, if somebody was interested in this, if after, you know, after they have their RV or van or whatever it is, is it something that they would do on their own, like order the stuff from you or, or would you recommend going to a professional installer, which I don't even know who that would be at this point, but would you recommend them going to somebody professional to, to install this? Yeah, the, the first place I'd suggest is come straight to us. We're doing free installations for all of our solar tracking systems right now. That's really helping us to learn about all the different vehicle applications, make our instructions easier for the DIYer to install and kind of make and fine tune as we're early in the, in the production phase. But we are assembling all of the systems ourselves, And so if a DIYer has the means to basically lift the system up onto their roof. Really, it's just a matter of attaching the brackets in you know, a couple locations and plugging in the electronics. So it is something a DIYer could do. And we also will work with your you know, preferred solar installer. Again, because we're basically assembling everything in-house, the systems are ready to just mount on the roof just as a, t- a typical solar panel would be. So it really doesn't impact the, uh, the installation that much. There's a little bit of, you know, there's a first time calibration procedure that you need to do when you first power the system on. But all of that is also very automated. It just needs to be driven around and it calibrates itself and it's ready to use. And you had said that you're doing installations right there. How, how large of a company are you guys currently? Our facility is about like a 1,700 square foot warehouse. You know, there's space enough to, to do one van, at a, one van or RV at a time. We're small right now. We're a new name in the, in the industry. And we're trying to tell the story about what can be done with solar and you know, kind of change some perceptions about the limitations that it has. It's early days, but we see a lot of uh, bright future and potential. Is it you and, and Masood climbing on the roofs doing the installs? For now, yes. Oh, awesome. That's really good. Yeah. Like you said, it's a perfect way to learn to be able to instruct others and maybe even make some minor tweaks to make it even easier. So that's great. Yeah, exactly. I think it's great that you guys are hands on. Definitely our skill sets complement each other. Definitely the things that Tom knows, like he is really good at and he can do it perfectly the same. The parts that we both don't know, we have to like split it between each other. So it's like it makes it a little bit challenging in a way that. Okay, it's a new it's a new field that we have to learn about. But let's split the tasks, and as we go, we learn. Are you guys open to the idea of people stopping by and checking out your facility or anything like that? Do you guys do a, I guess a factory tour? I know you, I know you just said that you're a small company and you're just kind of starting up, but could somebody come out to your place and take a look around and see what you guys are up to? Absolutely, anytime. Yeah, we're in Costa Mesa, California. My van has our heliotrope system installed on it. So if you want to see one in action, you can come out and check it out. And then, yeah, we're happy to show you around the shop where we have our solar panels and some of the other uh, systems available to show off. Okay. I think most people do understand like the benefits of solar and stuff like that. But I would imagine that you guys being in the industry itself, you probably hear a lot of maybe misconceptions. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Are there misconceptions out there about solar that you guys hear that you have to 
kind of correct people or educate them on on what you guys are doing? Yeah, I don't know if I if I call it misconception, but I, well, when, when we talk to people about solar panels and what their experience is, uh, it's mostly like they get they're like disappointed about the performance of the solar panels, and and we know why as engineers. That's basically that was the problem that we had that you know just the flat panels sitting flat, they're not going to do much. Right. Um, they always hear that you know I put up. 400 watt panels up there but i'm only getting 160 watt mm -hmm. we're like yeah that's why we're here that's the problem that we had that we tried to you know come up with a solution for that panels sitting flat they do not give you the max power they barely give you max power and their max performance so they're always disappointed about the expectations that they had beforehand and what they're getting and we're here to say that it is like you can have a if you have the um, the efficient uh, electrical components, and at the same time, if you capture as much as you can in terms of the, you know the, the current status of the uh, solar panels in terms of the efficiency, you can still be self-sufficient. Uh, you can still be you can still have that freedom going off grid. I know, Kenny, you have a pretty big RV with a nice solar uh, system. I'm curious, you know, how what's your experience been like trying to boondock off solar? And Sean, I'm, I'm not sure if maybe it, if you're an RVer as well, and if you have any experience on what you can do off of solar. Yeah, so I have a Class A motorhome. I'm 28 feet long. I have kind of a weird system up there, but we'll, to simplify, I'll just say I have 1,200 watts of solar up there. I actually have a little bit more, but we'll just say 1,200 watts of solar. In the summertime, on a cool day, it really depends also on temperature outside. So mm -hmm. 60, 70 degrees outside, I have seen my solar panels in the summertime bring in as, as much as 1,100 watts of solar. In the mm -hmm. winter times, even now, we're, we're mid-October. I'm looking at today, I think the highest I ever saw it reach was 538. So it's a mm -hmm. huge drop-off in October. It's not even winter yet. And if, if, if it's summertime and I'm in Arizona and it's 115 degrees out, what would have brought in 1,100 watts at 60 degrees is now bringing in closer to 750 watts or maybe, maybe 800 watts. So just temperature alone plays a lot in what I'm able to bring in throughout the day. Yeah, and I don't travel much in my RV anymore just because I my we have grandkids and my wife likes to spend a lot of time with them. So we mostly just camp in the spring and summer and early fall. I can't say we track our solar gains or losses very closely anymore, but we're able to boondock for you know, four or five days without any problem. That's without running the AC a lot. And again, that probably has the the batteries we use are probably a, a big factor in that as well. So yeah, I can't say, I mean, when I had my other RV, I had, I used to have a 44 or 42 foot fifth wheel with about 900 watts of solar. I used to track it very closely then and probably the similar experience to Kenny. So but I did know people that would get actually get on their roof every day and sort of tilt their panels. I just wasn't willing to do that. I would much rather have a system that did it for me. So yeah, I think you guys are solving a, a huge pain point with that because there's also safety concerns with climbing on your roof yeah. every day as well. So yeah, I, I think uh, an automated system that, that tracks the sun for you is is definitely a huge benefit to people that like to go out and boondock um, especially like Kenny, who likes to go away from people for days, it, it's uh, definitely a benefit. And I'll I'll add at twelve hundred watts, and I tell people, you know, I have twelve hundred watts, and they're like, wow, that's a lot of solar. I still don't feel like it's enough for really like what I want to be able to do, where I am running my AC all day because I am in Arizona. It is hot, so yeah, twelve hundred watts is a lot of solar, but it's still not enough. <laughs> right. And it's getting hotter every year. It's getting hotter. Your demand on your AC is getting getting higher. So you know, every but everybody's application is different, and there are other ways that you can you know kind of address it. And you know, we've seen other trends where people are buying just massive battery systems that are super heavy and they take up a lot of interior storage space, and that does give you a longer time to boondock. But it's really expensive, and you know what we're trying to show people there's another way, you know, you don't actually need to have a huge battery system if you can put more energy into the battery every day from solar. 
also people are using you know giant second alternators to to basically just reduce the amount of time that you need to idle your system to charge your battery but you still have to turn the engine on you're still you know burning gas it's not free you're still putting wear and tear on your engine uh, and also you're putting super high charge currents into your batteries which deplete their life over the time so you know solar's always been the idea or the concept it's it's great it just is lacking in terms of how much energy it can give you and that's you know exactly what we're trying to do with our system is is increase that in your panel i mean in your system so i guess question number 1 is is the base with the robotics and everything separate from the solar panels when i ask you this but what what types of warranties are there with those so uh, our mechanical parts have uh, a three-year warranty, the robot itself, but our panels, the solar panels, uh, have a 10-year warranty on them. Oh, that's great. And then what, is there any type of, once it's installed, is there any type of maintenance that a person needs to do, like to the, to the actual system to keep it in good operational condition, I guess? No, there's no regular maintenance schedules. There aren't any, you know, you don't need to re-lubricate anything. All of our components are sealed, automotive, you know, rated IP67, waterproof. We use corrosion-resistant fast stainless steel fasteners everywhere, and uh, nothing requires any normal, you know, regular maintenance. It's just a good idea to give it an operation every once in a while just to um, make sure that things are, are moving smoothly and that there's, there's no issues. But generally speaking, no, there's not anything you need to do. It actually helps with, uh, especially the single axis system. One of the things that um, we're able to do is mount it over top of uh, rooftop fans or air conditioners to even take a better uh, utilization of the roof space. Um, and because we can tilt the panel, you can still allow the operation and maintenance of those components if you need to get access to it. So you don't have to fully disassemble your solar panels if you need to service your air conditioner. For example, we can just tilt it up out of the way. Oh, very cool. Oh, okay. Good idea. I know you you talked about all the stuff that Masood had crammed into that, um, all the features that are crammed into that LCD display in terms of, of software. As you make updates, are there is there a way for existing customers to grab those updates? Yes, we have uh, the over-the-air, basically, OTA feature, which all you need to do on your LCD, basically, you turn the Wi-Fi toggle on, you connect to internet, and you hit a button, and it flashes the software to the latest version. If there are new features, anything that we've added recently, any, uh, any of our old customers, existing customers can, can have them immediately without the need, you know, coming to us or taking their vehicles to us. You guys said that, you know, you're okay with people coming, doing a factory tour, things like that to see the product. Other than coming to you guys, where can somebody see the product in person, maybe see it in action in person or anything like that? I, I'm guessing you're not in retail stores or anything like that just yet. Right. Yeah. We're not in retail stores right now, um, but we've been doing a lot of expos. Uh, we have done a number of the adventure van expos, which have a tour throughout the country. Uh, we've also been to a lot of the overland expo shows, either with a booth ourselves or having a system on a, uh, you know, a customer or a business that we're partnering with. Um, I think the next show we're hoping to get to is there's a, there's a new Overland show in uh, Costa Mesa in March of next year. I think that's the next one on our, uh, on our list. Yeah, we, you can always, of course, take a look at our website and our social media pages to see our products uh, there as well and reach out to us directly with any questions. Yeah, you guys actually have some pretty cool uh, videos on Instagram of it in action. And I guess it's a time lapse. So you get to really see its full form and, and function and flexibility. It's, it's, it's cool to say real quick, like what, how does somebody find you on Instagram and social media and stuff like that? So it's actually Robotios underscore Inc, I-N-C. Uh, that's our Instagram page. As you said, we're showcasing our products. If you have a customer on a new vehicle, on a new platform, uh, we're showing all those videos and pictures on our Instagram. As Tom mentioned, all the information and specs dimensions on the website. And we do take our customer service uh, actually very seriously. Both of us on, are on um, top of it 24-7. If there is a, there's a question, uh, anything they need to know for future uh, releases, 
uh, they can just directly reach reach out to us through phone, email on our website, and Instagram DM. We'll link to all those um, in our show notes. So for anybody listening, just go to our show notes and you'll be able to connect to their socials and their website as well. Um, but Tom and Masood, I think that's all of our questions, unless there's something that we missed or something that you guys would like to add. Yeah, I, I guess um, what, what we're trying to say is um, basically the flat, flat panels just don't, don't cut it. They're just taking the space on your roof. There is a way to be sustainable while being off-grid. And it's the way is to select the right uh, efficient products and to use your solar system as efficiently, efficiently as possible. And uh, we do have a, a calculator on our website, which, is, which we tried really hard to make it as user-friendly as possible. So you can go to our website on the first page. Uh, we do have this section that you can put all your electric components. And we do have a common assumption for the uh, power consumption all of all those components. Then you get an idea of how much power you're using currently. And then based on your time and location and where you are, you get an idea of how much flat panels uh, give you in terms of what hour and what gains do you get using our solar tracking systems. So I, I would definitely recommend for people to go check out our website and use that calculator to get an idea of how beneficial this product could be. Excellent. Well, we definitely want to thank you guys for taking your taking the time. I know you're super busy to come in on uh, the show and explaining how everything works. We'd love to, to hear the behind the scenes of what it takes to make a startup and get, get this going and get the word out. and Good luck with your patents. Uh, Sean and I know that a, 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 can be a struggle. So again, we, we really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you guys for having us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you both for the opportunity to, to chat with you. It's been, it's been really fun. It's great to meet you guys. And yeah, excited to uh, see where it goes. We were excited to be able to share that RoboTO story with you, especially while it is such a young company. I will not be surprised at all if this really takes off and we see these amazing solar panels flood the market. I'm certainly interested in getting one for myself, for my RV, as I do a decent amount of dry camping while touring the country for shows and expos. Now, I just have to talk to Sabrina about it. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. And if you wish to learn more about RoboTOs, be sure to check out our show notes for some photos of the products, as well as links to their social media and website. I have one more thing to add before we go, and that's if you could take the time to leave us a review or rating on your favorite podcast platform, that would really be great as these ratings help us get the show noticed and ranked a little higher for others to find us. Take care all and safe travels. Looking to get out there and stay out there? Battleborn Batteries Lithium Ion Batteries are here to power your RV, marine, and off-grid adventures. Designed as an easy drop-in replacement for traditional lead-acid batteries, these reliable solutions have two to three times the power, charge five times faster, are a fifth of the weight, and last 10 times longer. Offered in a variety of models in unique sizes and shapes, ranging from 50 amp hour to a robust 270 amp hour, and backed by a 10-year warranty. Battleborn batteries are built to fit your needs and power your experiences. On the road, on the water, and off the grid, reliable power is here. Check them out at BattlebornBatteries.com. With the complexity of all the systems in an RV, I always say it's not if something's going to break, but a matter of when is something going to break. That is why I think an extended warranty for RVs is so important. We first interviewed wholesale warranties back in 2019 and immediately became impressed with how their policies worked, such as you can take your RV to any licensed repair shop, including mobile repairs. They also have personalized service plans, making sure you are getting the right policy for your needs. And if you think your RV is too old for a policy, you might be surprised to hear that RVs up to 20 years old can still be approved for a policy. That is more age lenient than most RV parks I've stayed at. Go to wholesalewarranties.com forward slash beyond the wheel or click the link down below in our show notes to get your free quote today.